Caribbean Yard Campus is an educational enterprise that is designed to network traditional knowledge systems in the Caribbean. Now, the campus is presenting the second round of courses for their dry season program. And we want to talk about the dry season program as well. I love it. We have Lucia Olumide Ellis. She's a traditional healer and advocate. Also the founder of Numasa Wellness Resource Center in Belize. We also have director, playwright, and lecturer, Roel Gibbons. And I want to start with you, please, Mr. Gibbons, in terms of... What are some of the things or challenges that you've had to overcome on dealing with the pandemic, the Caribbean Yard Campus, moving through the pandemic? You know, yeah, thank you, DJ. Good evening, all. It's been a great opportunity, really. When we first encountered this crisis, um, the issue was how to convert our courses from being very practical very experienced, you know, we explore the country, people are engaged in activity because our learning, our way of learning and of teaching is really about experience of the knowledge, you know? So that was, a, that, was a, that was a main challenge for us. How do we convert these things to technology, you know? And as it was an opportunity because we did it by creating a methodology that allowed people to be actively engaged in the doing of things. That was the first thing. And then it was an opportunity because it helped us to fulfill the vision that we had, the Yard Campus, which is that we are a Caribbean institution. So we were able to go beyond that, right? So that what we're doing now link us with people all over the Caribbean with yards, because we call the, our, our yards are communities of knowledge all over the Caribbean and the diaspora. Yeah. So we've conducted what was a challenge into an opportunity. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you as well as Ms. Ellis. And Ms. Ellis, give me a little more info about your, your yard, please, in terms of Numasa Wellness Resource Center in Belize. I believe it's in Belmopan, the capital. Yes, it's, um, I'm 20 minutes outside of Belmopan. Um, thank you for having me. And Numasa Wellness Resource Center... It has been working with the campus yard for at least five to seven years. And um, we are a culturally based health resource center, meaning that we use the different art forms, and in this case, traditional herbal medicine, to enhance the well being of our, of our um, clients or the people we work with, the communities, it could be families, children. I have done work all throughout the region in St. Vincent as well as Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so I do research, herbal medicine research, and I have a garden. There's a garden for tangible um, viewing so that the people can learn, identify the herbs and, uh, and also learn about their, their use. And that is what the course we want to bring to the course so that the community, the, the people who attend the course will be able to identify, learn about the herbs and also um, put them into practical use to enhance their health. And even, and even before we started to speak about the courses, the specific courses, and I want to stay with you for a little bit, please, Ms. Lucia. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's an umbrella organization or a body that actually deals with tradition that represents traditional healers, intuitive healers in Belize. Uh, am, am I correct in that respect? Yes, we do have a, a, a group of, of us who advocate research and also promote um, use of herbal medicine. It's the Belize Association of Traditional Healers. And we are you know, whatever you know about Belize, we are a very diverse um, country. So in when we talk about herbal use, we're talking about the herbs used by the Maya, the East Indian, the Garifuna, Creole, Mestizo. So all of that together makes for the Belize pharmacopoeia. And that kind of knowledge is being retrieved and um, encouraged, especially at this time of, of COVID when health care is um, limited and the, the ability to 
people don't are afraid of going to the health facility for fear of get, catching COVID. So the people are trying home remedies more and more. So there is a, a is a, a revival of the whole um, traditional medicine practices at this time, and I suspect the same thing is happening in the Caribbean. And I'm, a, I'm, like a, I'm like a dog with a bone with it right now. And part of the reason I asked you, please, Ms. Lucia, is because I'm wondering what are some of the things or some of the ways that the, that the organization or the body, the, over, the umbrella body, interacts with the uh, more straight-laced or policy or the formalized healthcare system in Belize. And I wonder whether or not there are any things that we could take from that just before we dive into the course, courses. Of course, yes. Um, I like that question because as an advocate, I we have been lobbying for the integration of herbal medicine into our primary health care system. And um, more than ever, there is a recognition of, of the value of that. However, a formal arrangement is still in the making, but it will happen very soon. Recently, the Ministry of Health had extended their portfolio from Ministry of Health to Ministry of Health and Wellness. And um, so that wellness enhances, brings in what we use in our environment. And also we are collaborating with the um, National Institute for Culture and History. And so our culture policy in 2014 has a clause in it, the recognition of alternative medicine as a vehicle for enhancing the optimum health of our community. So I, we use that platform to, to push that the agenda of integrating herbal medicine into a healthcare system. So it's, it's happening. It requires a lot of um, conversation, research, mm -hmm. and forums like the networking with, with Campus Yard, as well as Tramil in the region has provided our group here in Belize with tangible and useful basis to, to encourage our Ministry of Health and Wellness to go the route that we want, that of bringing traditional healing practices into our national health policy. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Roldo Vexutma, but I just couldn't leave that one alone yeah. for a little bit. And, and that also kind of takes me to the title of the traditional, the traditional medicine course. And I, feel, I find it a little provocative uh, in terms of sweet broom and bitter bush, the science of traditional medicine. And was that intended to be like absolutely. that? Absolutely, absolutely. Every single word is intentional there. <laughs> you know, two of our, our common um, plants are sweet broom, but well, they used to be common. You can't get them so, so, um, so frequently now. But sweet broom and bitter bush are both plants that are well known among our, our, our folk here. Um, and what we try to do in the course is to bring together the two sciences, right? We call it the science of traditional medicine because we are looking both, we're treating with traditional medicine as a science, right? It has a of observing what is happening and of prescribing for effect for, for, for illnesses and so on. It has its own methodology. So that's one science, and then the conventional Western science, which we recognize, medicine and so on. So we bring the two together. So when we look at the books, we are looking at the effectiveness, we're looking at their tox toxicity, whether they are you know, they can be poisonous depending on the, on the dosage, dosages that you use. We're looking at how to prepare them. Um, and and we, of course, the, bio, the, the botanical names of the herbs so that they can be recognized and identified wherever you go in the world, yeah? And of course, we, we go through the research insofar that there is available research on some of these herbs, we allude to those, to those sources as well. So. That's what I mean when I said that we, we, are, we are looking at the science of traditional medicine. In the first place, we are treating it as a science, recognizing, recognizing in that science the spiritual aspect, okay? Spiritual aspect of dealing with the environment. 
And with that, we take a short break. When we return, we are going to continue this conversation. We're talking about the Caribbean Yard Campus. Stay with us. We're speaking with Ms. Lucia Ellis and Mr. Royal Gibbon. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Lucia Ellis and Royal Gibbons about the Caribbean La Yard Campus. Mr. Gibbons, we're giving you a little more time to ramage because I don't know whether or not I'm feeling nostalgic for Hodot and Seri and some boil up and all these things. But in, we, we started speaking about the, um, the traditional medicine course. But what are some of the other courses that are on uh, offer for the second round of the dry season program? Right, right, right. We have four courses, actually. The medicine is one. Uh, we are offering a course in holistic agriculture right, that we call planting people. And again, that's a different title because we're not, it's not just about, you know, planting crops. It's about planting people. In other words, how do you grow yourself as an individual and fulfill yourself through the idea of, of and the activity of agriculture, right? So that course looks at um, not only planting methods and so on, traditional planting methods, but also the development of artistic skills because the people who teach it are involved in a number of different activities and taking the product to market. So we have that, a second course. We have a third course on Creole, um, what we call Patois in Trinidad. Which so kind? This round from St. Lucia, where the population speaks Creole. Okay, so it's, being, it's, a, it's a, like a second level course in Patois. All right, Creole, so it's a, it's a great experience for us. And finally, we have a new course, which is very intriguing. It's a course that is looking at the connections between historical connections between Trinidad, Tobago, and Venezuela. Yeah, um, you know, geological connections, uh, the, the movement of indigenous peoples and the, civilized, the, the, the communities that had been established by indigenous peoples from both both, 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 both um, areas and so on. All our links, our links, our social links, you know, um, what's happening down in the south and so on, in the in southern, southern peninsula. All of those things are being covered in this course and giving it, uh, giving our, our population uh, the historical grounding to understand what is happening now. Right? And that's an important, an important step for us because that course, Nacido del, 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 del Orinoco, really launched a program that we will be seeing more of in our next season, our rainy season, when we're talking about the history of Trinidad and Tobago. That course launches that program on history. Okay, so we'll be dealing with other aspects of history as we go along. So that's what we're offering, those four courses. Um, and even with this, new, this news course that is on offer, what would happen if a course like this was not available? And I ask that because sometimes it feels as though there is no history because we're not hearing that tree falling in the forest. So because we're now experiencing these sorts of interactions, we don't, we don't, many of us don't realize that there used to be a great deal of interactions happening before. So when you hear like Kalinda men or Bowman talking about people coming from, uh, coming from outside of Trinidad and stuff to play, to play stick, or you hear other experiences where there's some phrases or some ways that language is used, um, how important to you is it that these that this course bridges that kind of information and saying, "Hey, we've been here, we've had these interactions, we've had these engage on, in, engagements." Well, it, it's it's critical, you know, the key to the to the philosophy of Yard Campus, which is that you know we've got to, we are so disconnected as a people from ourselves that our belief is that. Unless those connections are made, you know, we're spinning up in mud. We're not going anywhere. We're following other people, other people's paths. But we have created so much here in the Caribbean. The Caribbean is an, a, a completely fascinating place that is not recognized and is not recognized, not known. Partly because, partly because our education system doesn't really propagate it. That's one thing. But also because of the fact that we are, we, we tend to be so isolated. You know, so you don't know what's going on in Belize or in Suriname or in Barbados and so on in any real way, even within our own country, frankly speaking, among our different communities. So it's absolutely critical mm -hmm. to, 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 to deal with that disconnect that you talk about. Yes, and make those connections real. Those are actual 
temporal connections, but there are also connections with the past, all right, which helps us to, to, to revive the knowledge that we had about ourselves. We can't be whole unless we do those things. Yes. You know, that's, that's, that's what you've touched on there is really the, the, the essence, the center of what we are doing at Caribbean Air Campus. And I know some people used to say that the Caribbean Sea, at one point in time, it felt as though it used to connect us a lot more, but now it kind of divides us. But speaking of sea, I want to bring you in, please, Miss Lucia, in terms of to expand on that same point that you were talking about and using the example of the Garifuna. So in terms of like moving from Euromain or St. Vincent and the Grenadines to be able to have this current thread and these people and this experience throughout the Caribbean and different places in terms like Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize. Uh, so let, let, me, let me get your spin on it, thank you. Exactly, I think the, the connection is so important and empowering and affirming. Um, I recall when I went to Trinidad to do the Garifuna Caravan um, presentations, I, I learned that of the, of the connection the Garinago had with Trinidad and Tobago. And the participants themselves of, of those sessions were able to add, add, add additional information to the history knowledge that I had. And so it, it points out that we are, we are so connected, we are more connect, similar than different. And that kind of um, unlearning of, of our differences is very key to, to bring us back to ourselves and to empower us and to make us more um, in control, feel that we're in control of ourselves. Um, it's part of the um, combating of colonialism, the impact of colonialism and the oppression. So if we are able to tap into these, this knowledge base that comes with the herbal medicine and our history, the fact that we were connected with Venezuela and Suriname and, and, and those with each other, we will realize that we used to work together. Mm -hmm. So it will give us the, the motivation to, to, to revisit how we can collaborate, what, or what, what unifies us rather than what divides us. And that is one of the, the um, lessons that will come out of all of these courses that we have a lot in common. Let us build on that for our, as our strength rather than look at our differences, which will make us feel powerless. Mm, definitely. And Mr. G Mr. Mr. Roll, we have about a mm. minute more, so we need to get on the business end of things in terms of how can people register? Uh, is it an online process? How do they get more information from you? How long is how long are the courses? Okay, so the, the, the course, each course runs for 12 weeks. Okay, and it's the contact is once per week, right? So, on uh, uh, this particular course, the the um, sweet broom and bitterbush is held on Mondays, all right? Mondays five to eight. All the courses, well, not to them, uh, on, at five to eight in the evenings. Yes, um, you register online. You get all the information at our website, which is CaribbeanYardCampus.org. Right, just Google it, CaribbeanYardCampus.org, and it leads you into, gives you the information on all the all the courses, when they are, and so on, and the cost. But the cost is very reasonable. We kept it down. You know, we, all, the cost is always reasonable. Our costs are always reasonable. We kept that, and and all the information about time, timetabling, and all the rest of it. Yes, you register online. The course is delivered online. Right, and uh, I want to be clear. Uh, the three hour course, three hour session, but it's very participatory, very active. Okay, because people are involved in research, you're involved in making things happen. All right, and in making a difference. So it's 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 a it's a you know it's a it's a very active and participatory course. So that's the process. www.trevignardcampus.org. All right, so you're on it. Thank you so much, Mr. Gibbons. Thank you so much, Ms. Ellis. And thank you for tuning in on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Ross. Now have a good night.